Hi, good morning, Andreas. I'm enjoying good morning. Your, I'm enjoying your talk very much. Oh, good. But I have a skeptical question. Of course. So, as, as you can hear, I'm from Europe, where we still trust our government. Yes. And um, I, so, I'm, I'm Greek originally, yeah, so yeah. I would put a question mark next to yeah. that, but hey. Well, I'm from the Netherlands, so, so we still yes, very trust good. it. But, but my question is really, so, so I like your, your, your anal analogy with uh, foreign currencies. Yes. So, but where, when I arrive back tomorrow or Saturday at Schiphol Airport, there's a sign right at the customs which says, if you carry more than $10,000 or euros or whatever, uh, you have to declare it. Yes. And I think it's it's a good thing that you have to have because there are all kinds of money anti money laundering and very good all kinds of things. How would this actually work? Who, who would create that trust and that that, that that guardianship in a all Bitcoin world? That world is gone. I'm afraid to tell you that world is gone. When I go through an airport, I am transporting zero currencies because Bitcoin doesn't have a physical location. So I don't actually have Bitcoin on my phone or my hardware wallets or my Bitcoin devices. I have cryptographic keys. The Bitcoin lives on the blockchain network, which is propagated everywhere in the world. So when I arrive at Schiphol, the Bitcoin is already in the Netherlands waiting for me. I didn't transport it across the border. It was already there. It is already everywhere. I'm moving. My money is global and is always global. There is no such thing as transmitting money in Bitcoin. Because all you do is you declare a change of ownership to a global network where the money is always in the global network and never actually moves. So the whole framework of laws around money transmission is completely obsolete simply because you do not transmit money anymore. It reaches a level of abstraction where, as Microsoft would put it, your money is in the cloud. And what that means in practical terms is that message on the customs board doesn't really have any practical meaning. Now, when we have this discussion with regulators and law enforcement agencies around the world, the immediate reaction is to think that I'm questioning their authority to do this. Like, but we have a mandate from a democratically elected government. You can't tell us that we no longer have the authority to do this. I absolutely do not question the authority to do this. I very much question the means to do this. And there's a very big difference when suddenly the authority is ever present, but the means have disappeared completely. Regulators are the first group to be massively disrupted by this technology because it has removed their ability to control money flows because money stopped flowing. And this is going to force us to face a world in which money exists universally and can be changed, can have changed ownership without ever being transmitted, and borders are completely meaningless. If at the same customs area it said, please do not bring any data into the Netherlands, you'd look at that and go, that's a bit silly, right? My data isn't, I, I can leave my USB sticks behind. My data is in the cloud. Well, what happens when money is data? And that's what this technology does. It is data, and it's in the cloud, and it isn't being transported. So those restrictions basically no longer work at all. Although I do get sometimes customs officials asking me about, you know, do you have Bitcoin in your bag? And I say, no, I don't, which is the honest answer, because I don't have Bitcoin in my bag. Um, when I first started traveling across borders and being in the Bitcoin space, I was very reluctant to say the B word at customs. I mean, you know, it is one of their domains. Um, I found a much better approach is to go into full pitch, uh, and then they leave you alone. So what do you do? <laughs> Bitcoin. Have you heard about it? It's this amazing peer-to-peer -peer system that allows you... Okay, welcome to the Netherlands, sir. <laughs> go ahead. Uh, just overwhelm them with enthusiasm. They hate that. Back Somewhat there? of a related question. In yes. your view, what's going to be the geopolitical impact of this, uh, especially when it comes to pegged currencies or rogue nations? Yes. Um, the geopolitical impact of this is absolutely enormous. 
And part of the reason for that is because over the last 50 years, we have converted money from being a store value medium of exchange and unit of account into being a system of control and a geopolitical pawn in a global game. And when you have national money, what I call flag money, you remember the old airlines that had a flag on the tail? Right? Those are obsolete, but now that's happening to money. Um, the idea that money becomes a system of control to play geopolitical games through embargoes and currency controls is itself a relic of uh, the industrial era and is being made rapidly obsolete by this technology. It has radical geopolitical uh, implications. It removes the ability of sovereigns to control monetary supply. Most importantly, it removes the ability of central banks to take the entire population hostage on some kind of crazy hyperinflation drive into disaster, as we're seeing happen right now in Venezuela. Uh, we've seen it happen in Brazil, Argentina, Cyprus, Greece, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And in all of those cases, the initial reaction is to apply currency controls so as to stop the population from fleeing and keep them all bound into this experiment. Hostage. That game is over. Not yet visible, because only a tiny sliver of the population can actually escape the controls. Right now in Venezuela, we see the largest surge in use of Bitcoin in the world uh, because of their hyperinflation problems. Only a tiny percentage of the population can escape. What happens when that's 10% of the population, when it's 15, 20, 25? At that point, the entire hyperinflation experiment goes wrong. The entire whatever central bank currency control system becomes fatally undermined. This has enormous geopolitical implications. Yes. And again, your initial reaction to this is, but we shouldn't, but we mustn't, but we can't. But it is, and that's the basis we have to start with. <laughs>